Chapter 1. Aya could hear the music floating through the walls and the woman's voice. One, two, pull de bras, lift those arms, girls, three, four, straighter, yes, seven, eight, elongate. The notes of the piano seemed to trickle through Aya's limbs and her fingertips moved involuntarily towards the tune that tinkled through the stuffy air. The music stopped. Aya wiggled her toes and glanced around. The community centre was crowded, a jumble sale collection of people talking in a bustle of different languages. Hot sun spilled through the dusty window and the room smelled of soup and unwashed clothing and sadness, Aya thought. She sighed and shifted in her seat. The music started again and Aya glanced upwards. The piano notes were coming from somewhere close by. Upstairs? If she closed her eyes really tight and focused hard enough, she could almost, almost imagine herself back home in the dance studio in Aleppo with the heat on her limbs, the white hot sun falling through the skylight and the aromas of the city trickling through the windows, dusty streets, car fumes, incense. She smiled as she remembered standing at the bar, tracing her pointed toe through a series of rond de jambes, recalling the dust that sometimes trickled across the floor and that drove Madame Belova mad. Anyone looking at Aya at that moment would have seen a small girl who looked much younger than her 11 years holding a sleeping toddler in her arms. She had her eyes closed and a curious expression danced over her face as her small foot traced circles on the grubby floorboards. A headscarf covered her black hair and the clothes she was wearing were too big for her. Leggings sagged over her skinny limbs and an old dress which once might have belonged to her mother hung limply off her tiny frame. And yet there was something about the way she sat, the bird-like tilt of her pinched face that made her seem as if she belonged somewhere different. The sounds of the music stopped and Aya wriggled in her hard plastic seat. She was hungry and Musa was heavy in her arms. The music made her feel fidgety and restless and something else that she couldn't find a word for. She shook her head determinedly and sat up straight. She needed to be focused today to help Mama. How long do you think it will be? She asked the woman next to her who just shrugged. I wasn't sure if she'd even understood. She glanced around again. They'd been waiting for three hours to talk to the caseworker, a young man with a beard and tired-looking eyes who sat behind a makeshift desk, papers and files piled up around him. Right now, he was talking to Mr and Mrs Masood, the old couple from the hostel who had told Aya that they came from Damascus. Aya heard the words, application for asylum, appeal, lawyers, undocumented, hearing, same old story, she muttered to Musa. Right, Moose? Over and over, wherever we go. Musa shifted in his sleep, making the funny little sucking noises that made Aya want to squeeze him tight. You sound like a baby rabbit, Moose, she muttered, planting a kiss on her brother's grubby, tear-stained face. His hair was damp with sweat, his fingers clasped tightly round Aya's thumb. She remembered the first time she'd held him, the wave of love that she'd felt then, the feeling she'd had that she would never let anything happen to him, ever. Don't worry, Moosey, she whispered into his damp cheeks. Aya's here. Aya's going to sort it all out. Promise. Mama was sitting next to her. She looked tired and far away. It won't be long now, Mama, Aya said. But Mama did not reply. She just kept staring up at the dusty windows as if she could see something through them that Aya could not. You okay, Mama? Aya asked. You hungry? I can get you some food. There's soup today. But Mama said nothing. Just then, the door to the community centre swung open and music spilled into the room, louder now. A quicker piece was playing and Aya found her toes tapping out the beat on the floor. One, two, three, squeeze, two, three, to the bar, two, three, and photograph, lovely ladies. Aya held her breath for a second. Photograph, she muttered half to herself and half to Musa. Madame Belova looked to say that too. Photograph, 
It meant a moment of stillness, a pause, catching hold of the music and waiting with it. The notes and the dancers suspended in time, hovering in the air, just for a second. Suddenly, Aya couldn't sit still a minute longer. She glanced at the queue of people in front of them. It'd be ages before they were called. She could slip out just for a moment to go and look. Mama, I'm just going out. I won't be long. I promise I'll be back to help. And I'll get you some soup and bread. You need to eat, OK? Mama turned and nodded, but she seemed to have only half heard. I'll make sure she eats properly today, Aya said to herself. And I'll rub her temples the way Dad used to when she got one of her headaches. And I'll talk to the caseworker and get everything sorted out. And then Mama will be able to relax and get better. Be herself again. Aya carefully uncurled her little brother's fingers from her own and laid him down gently in the battered pushchair that Sally, the nice young volunteer who ran the centre, had found for them. And she stood up and did a little spin on the spot, which, just for a moment, made old Mr Abdul sitting opposite think of a curling autumn leaf falling through the air. But Aya was unaware of being leaf-like as she made her way over to the doorway. She just needed to shake off this fidgety feeling that the music had sent trickling through her limbs before she burst 